Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today, I would like to talk about how to size a three different type of a ring correctly in this Rhino 3D software tutorial. Are you ready? Let's get started. There are three different type of a ring in this video. I would like to talk about how to size it properly. I started talking about this ring band here. If you make this model and I'm going to delete this one originally and the way that I make it, it should have a curve and for the ring rail and then this is for the cross section. So the way that I make it is using a sweep one rail. I got rail, you got a cross section right here. Now, if you going to size this ring and then you just going to size up and down like this, notice that the thickness will change as well. So usually it doesn't look good if you have a list of a ring and then they all have a different thickness in different size. So the way that I will size this one, let's say I'm going to make this ring a little bit bigger. And then so let's say I'm going to size into this size for whatever that size is. The better way to do is actually is moving your cross section to the new uh, position. So let's say I want to go from the midpoint uh, to the quadrant right here. So now I'm going to do the sweep one rail one more time. You got this rail, you got this cross section. So then you will get this the new ring and the new ring will have the same thickness. All right now sometimes people will ask me like what about if this is already in the mesh i bought it online and it's coming into the mesh and it looks something like that can i size it it's hard to size any mesh um, i will say properly uh, unless you're just doing uh, to the scale big and small so let's say this is the mesh that you have and then you want to do 3d scale and the way that i will suggest is the same let's say we want to size from this size back to this ring size so what i like to do is to find something that i can align with this mesh so i'm going to have this one and my curve right there and i'm going to have them align from my top view, align to the bottom somewhere right there. All right. So then I have, let me did it this one here. So then I have this one is aligned there, right? Uh, and the way that I'm going to, let me, let me move it down to the center here, right? So the way that I'm going to size is I'm going to, going to use the scale 3D and I'm going to snapping, like this is what I'm going to snail. A scale snapping into the zero and I first want to snapping into somewhere right here but there's no point for me to snap so make sure on the bottom vertex on your old snap is snapping right there and I want to move it back into the quadrant right so this is more accurate way that you can mod, uh, scale it but notice that the thickness is well changed for sure okay um, you may try to use a 2D scale right here, and then you're gonna do zero. Again, snapping into the vertex and coming back to this one, right? So then uh, the thickness will not change in this case. That will be something that I will suggest for the this type of a ring, okay? The second one is we want to talk about the dome ring right here. Now, as you can see, I have this dome ring and the way that I did again is starting with the, with the surface tool, you have sweep one rail and you got this rail that you got this cross section, right? Again, if you sizing up or down, let's say I want to size another one and just by comparison, like this one and it seems like going bigger but at the same time it increased the width and also increased the thickness of the ring right so in this case we definitely need to have this one to redo the sweep and let's say what about I already lost I do have a 3dm file but I'm going to hide this curve right here I do have a 3dm file but I lost what this original shape 
right here. The command that you can use is called duplicate edges. And you can see there's a seam right there. Let me change into the black color. It's easier for you to see that seam. You see the darker line right there? This is where it is the beginning and end for this sweep right there. So you can say duplicated edges. And then you want to pick up all those edges right here. And then you can delete this surface. This will be the edge that you are going to scale big and small or change in the size, right? Um, then you can change the ring size. Let's say I want to change the ring size. It's going to go smaller for whatever ring size is this going to be. And then to be easier to move my piece, I'm going to draw a line snapping into here and here and just using the midpoint of that straight line and we're gonna use the move command to move from the midpoint to the quadrant so that way it will be in the right place and then we can do the sweep one rail again from here to here and then you will have the proper size and without changing the thickness of this hollow ring okay the third one I would like to talk about is when you have something with the ring, it's already done uh, like this, right? Now, if you say, PJ, what happened if I already bowling this one and this one, and I want to change the ring size, and there's no way you can scale up and down, because you cannot change the stone size, right? You can only change the shank and you cannot change the seat. So what can I do? If you uh, click on the right top corner right here, I have a video showing you how to size a ring if it is already in this size. But I also want to show you the proper way to save your file for the future sizing for this scenario. Okay, so this is the original file that I will always keep there. Uh, every time I'm making a model like this, I do not just go ahead and bowling it. I always wanted to move it on the side, right? And then I will hiding this one and working on this one. So what I like to do on this one, whenever you send it to your client, you wanted to draw a straight line right here and here, and then you wanted to cut it, right? So with this line, I'm going to mirror to the other side and using those two to trim off this interior here so you don't see the ring shim blocking the stone. Then once you have this, depends on where the seam is, this one might be break, you wanna join them and you also wanna cap it, right? And then after that, you can have this one extruded. So let's go to the solid, extruded planar curve straight. And then we're gonna have this one and all three seat I'm going to do is boring union first and I'm going to boring difference from this uh, inner cylinder there. So that will be this ring. Now, what if I need to size it? I'm gonna go back with this. If I need to size this ring, I'm going to delete this one, delete this one. Let's say I'm going to size it a little bit smaller or bigger. Let's do a little bit bigger right there. Again, first we need to create our ring shank by moving this cross section using the move command, snapping from the quadrant to the quadrant right there. And we want to create the new ring from here to here, okay? And after that, you need to thinking about where it is your stone. Now, currently the stone, it need to be moved higher because where the stone from the cooler to the bottom of the ring shank, it need to be have at least 0.5 millimeter, right? Just for sure. And so we just want to moving up. I will suggest to move up the same high all the differences between the two different sizes. All right, and then the rest of it will be the same and then and then you can continue to work on this one. So I'm going to fast forward from here, repeating what I just showing you. All right, so then that will be another ring. And then again, you wanna always try to keep this original one so you can change the size easily. I hope you like this video. I have a lot more to show you in the membership program. Click on the join button. Hope to see you in the program. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.